<laughs> well, yeah, because I basically have dropped off from the face of the earth. <clears throat> I have uh, been the object of attack from so many different people. Uh, you know, all you need is one person to attack you in the public and all the people who don't like you to start with will jump in on that. Whether it's true or not, doesn't matter. They'll jump in on it and they will, they will carry on that attack. And then, uh, you know, and then you've got, uh, looky loos who will come on and they will see, and then they'll join in the attack. And before you know it, you've got all kinds of people, uh, you know, ad hominem attack upon your person, upon your name, and upon your family. And um, it's a feeding frenzy. And the mere fact that the original attack had no basis in fact at all is irrelevant. That doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with anything. And so if you're a famous person, you're going to have to deal with the fact that so many people are going to attack you. And uh, so I've gotten to the point where it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I just do what I do, do the best I can. And uh, eventually I, I figure that uh, you know the truth will come out one day. And there's been so many times in the past people have been attacked in the press and, and in the public. I and then you know later on we find out a few years later what really happened and uh, so I'm thinking well eventually it very well might finally come out what really has happened as opposed to what people are saying about me because I have made a lot of enemies uh, the people these charlatans these little uh, criminals who are running the churches, who are making millions and millions of bucks off of poor, innocent people and dancing around the stage and doing their act and making lots of money. Um, you know, they're not very happy with Jordan Maxwell. They're not very happy with my work of uncovering all of this uh, shenanigans in the name of religion and government and courts and banking and all this stuff that's going on. And so I have had people who have uh, premeditatedly lied, knowing they were lying, and started rumors uh, who called themselves Christians, born-again Christians, when the one of the Ten Commandments is Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Well, there are certain Christians in this country that have not only bared false witness, but are just downright liars. And they knew they were lying when they did it. And so other people pick up on that uh, who see me as an enemy to their comfort zone, to their little comfort box that they live in. And so they jump in on this guy's lies and deceits who's trying to destroy my name and my work. And uh, they jump in on it, and then other people jump in on it. And so after a while, I've, I've, I've gotten so many born-again Christians, mostly as born-again Christians, mostly. Uh, who are trying to destroy my work by not confronting my work, but by confronting my person, my name, in an what is called an ad hominem attack, an ad hominem attack on my person, on me, attacking my name, attacking my family, attacking my 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 background, where I come from, uh, and so after a while, I just gave up because all I'm getting is nothing but attacks from everywhere, and I don't own anything. I'm not making anything. I'm not wealthy. I don't. I sleep on a floor in one room with nothing. And people who know me know that. And so um, I've gotten to a point where I just give up. 
I thought I was trying to do something to awaken my, my fellow man, only to discover that in America, the Christians and so many other people in this country, they don't want to be awakened. They're tired of hearing me telling them the real truth about what's going on. And so they're not only challenged, but they're scared to death that I'm going to blow their cover. And so uh, uh, I've, I've had people, like I said, born-again Christians knowingly, knowingly lying, premeditated, and later on admitting it in private conversations. Yeah, they just put that out there to, uh, you know, to cause him trouble. Well, it did. But, uh, you know, it's bearing false witness against your neighbor. But these born-again Christians, they couldn't care less about God, honor, decency, or anything else. They're just, they're just Al-Qaeda Christians. You know, the same Christian, born-again Christians who are talking about those crazy loons in the Middle East with their Al-Qaeda uh, fundamentalist, Islamic fundamentalist. This is a term that's used. Islamic fundamentalists, they're all Al-Qaeda crazy uh, religious fanatics. Well, that's what we call Christians today in America, fundamentalists. They're the fundamental Christians. Well, and so they actually are the same as the fundamentalist Al-Qaeda. They're the same thing in America. We call them our fundamentalist Christians. They're equally as corrupt and criminal as uh, as the Al Qaeda is, so I've had too many people threatening me, threatening my my life, threatening my work, threatening uh, people around me, um, and after a while, being uh, you know losing everything I own, losing everything I've worked for to other people who have come in. Uh, you know, took advantage of my situation, had me sign uh, agreements with them and then take everything I own and leave me for nothing, leave me with nothing. At the same time, being criticized and lied about in the, in, in the world to the point where I, and I don't have any way to defend myself. I don't own nothing. I don't have anything. I don't even have a dime, nothing. So uh, I sleep on a floor in an air mattress in a friend's home with nothing, period. And so, uh, uh, and of course, I had that problem a long time ago with the Federal Trade Commission, and everybody wants to jump on that and show that here's Federal Trade Commission found Jordan Maxwell guilty of something, and guilty of this, and guilty of that. And that proves the point right there that Jordan Maxwell is a is a is a criminal, international criminal, and all that kind of stuff. Well, the people who actually, you know, were there around me, the people who lived right around me, my my closest friends, they know what happened uh, in that case. That federal uh, was it the Federal Trade Commission case that I was involved in. My friends know I had nothing to do with any of it. I didn't even know what was happening. Somebody had to call me and tell me what was going on because I didn't know anything about any of it. I didn't know anything about the case. I didn't know anything about what the case was about. And it was never was told anything by anybody about nothing. <clears throat> And I and I was told by federal agents, we know you had nothing whatsoever to do with this federal uh, uh, this federal case of which you're involved. We know that. We already know who you are. We've we've already gone back to your first grade to when you were in the first grade. We know exactly who you are, all your whole life. We know you had nothing whatsoever to do with this. But unfortunately, your name was brought up, and so that's why you're involved in it. Well, even the federal federal agents knew I had nothing to do with any of it. I didn't even know what was going on. They had to tell me what, what the whole case was about. I didn't know anything about it. But I happened by chance to be in the wrong place at the wrong time trying to help somebody else out. And in the process, my name got involved, and then I'm now looking like a criminal, and uh, so, anyway, 
So that's why I've just kind of dropped out of the picture because I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I think it, I'm, I'm one person out here trying to do something to help my fellow man, <clears throat> and all it's gotten me is, um, you know, broke and left left with for dead, and the object of derision, object of uh, lies, and and uh, so I, you know, I've just kind of given up. At 73 years old, I'm tired. I've done the best I could, and um, I realized. I've, I've always known that I have been involved in doing what I do and doing what I've been doing for all my life for 53 years, uncovering all the darkness of religion and government and banking and all of the conspiratorial crap that's been going on. Uh, I realize that I'm up against a very, very highly organized criminal syndicates that are running the earth. And so I'm making a lot of enemies that don't want people hearing what I'm doing. And so they will put people up to doing to lying or to to false charges, anything they can do to belittle. Normally, back in the 1200s, 10, 11, and 1200s in Europe, I would have just it wouldn't have been a problem. I would have been just burned at the stake, and that's it. They just cut your head off. And be done with it. If you're offending the king and offending the princes, they just they just take care of you immediately. <clears throat> but in America, they can't do that. They can't kill you in front of everybody. So they just destroy your name. They destroy your family. They destroy your family's name and, and your work and, and marginalize you and mock you and call you every name in the book. And so... And the great masses of the people who couldn't care less, they don't know anything about who you are, all they are. They just hear all the stuff, and then they go on repeating it. So at 73 years old, I just gave up. I, I did the best I could and tried to do the best I could to educate people. But I'm up against a, a organized crime at its highest levels, which is the church. <clears throat> I was told... <clears throat> Excuse me, I was told, <clears throat> many years ago I was told by an FBI agent in San Diego, I got a call, uh, I had a little small room office, one little room uh, office in, uh, in Glendale, <clears throat> and I was writing and doing videos, etc., and I got a phone call from an FBI agent. <clears throat> and he told me, he said, Jordan, I'm calling. This is this is a social call, not business. So I said, give me your name, which he did. And I said, I'll call you back. So I hung up on him, and I called the information to get the number of the FBI in San Diego. Uh, I called that number, and I asked for him, and they put me through to him. So now at least I've clarified for myself he is who he says he is. <clears throat> so he told me, he said, the reason I'm calling is to tell you that um, we know who you are, what you're doing, and we don't see you, your government does not see you as a threat at all. We realize you're just a, an ordinary man trying to help people to wake up. We don't see you as a threat, but... If you're going to have trouble in the future, it's going to come from the church. This is what he told me. It's going to come from the church because we know here in the FBI, we know that the Christian movement today, as it exists in America today, is a criminal institute. We know that. There's no doubt in our mind about it at all. The people who run Christianity in America today are criminals. Because when you deal with this kind of money and million-dollar airplanes and jets and hiding funds in, in the Bahamas and all kinds of uh, criminality and drug running and prostitution and all the stuff that the church is really actually involved in, and we know they're involved in it. So we and the FBI know that the church is, in America, a criminal organization. But it's got the people uh, snickered. They've got the people ignorant, so they don't know. People don't know, but we know. And therefore, if you are attacking the church and religion, trying to expose them, 
if you have any real problems coming in your life, it's going to come from organized crime, the church, because that's what, exactly what the Christian church is in America and in the world today. It is an organized criminal syndicate. That was an FBI agent in San Diego. So <clears throat> the point being is that I know that. And so that's why I've been under attack, and that's why I'm being attacked now. And uh, so many of my attackers and people who are trying to destroy my work and my name are Christians, born-again Christians who love the Lord Jesus, washed in the blood of the Lamb, saved by the Holy Ghost, and don't give a damn about the Ten Commandments or, the, or bearing false witness against their friend, against their neighbor. Uh, they don't care about lying. They don't care about thievery. They don't care about anything. As a matter of fact, some of the Christians have actually murdered other people. And so, you know, I don't see where Christianity has anything to say about Islam <clears throat> or the corruption of Islam when they are equally as, built, as bad and equally as guilty. And you have to remember that all... The, the two biggest wars ever fought in the world was World War One and World War Two, and it was between Christ, Christian countries. Germany was a Christian country. Europe was Christian. America was Christian. All of Central and South America and Mexico were Christian. So two of the greatest wars ever fought on the earth, World War One and World War Two, and the, and the massacres of, uh, in the Middle East today the, uh, the major wars going on on the earth today, religious, period, religious wars. So <clears throat> I am I feel very justified in saying I was right. I was telling you, religion is a, is a racket. It's nothing more than a criminal, lying, criminal racket where the preachers and all these mentally deranged preachers jumping around the stage and spitting on people and falling over and jumping around the stage and laying on the floor and shaking and all that nonsense. It's just an incredible array of criminality that's making hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And the American people are famous all over the world for giving money to charlatans, the religious fanatics, drug running <clears throat> The Medellin cartel makes billions of years, uh, billions a year off of the sale of drugs to Americans. Americans are a drug society. They are heavy into drugs, alcohol, uh, gang wars, murder, violence, slavery, and religion, Christianity, and Judaism, and Islam, and this whole entire Western civilization is just very sick, and it's dying. It's dying all over the world because there is no truth left. There is no vision. There's no vision of reality left. There's no vision of the people. And the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. And so that's what's going on today. Western civilization is collapsing. There's nothing but violence, corruption, pollution, <clears throat> drive-by killings, drug addiction, alcoholism, all of this in a Christian country. And at the same time, Christians are out there bad-mouthing each other, bad-mouthing anyone trying to help, and they're ignorant, ill-informed, unread, mentally deranged, <clears throat> mentally unstable, and dim-witted. And that's Christianity today. The Christianity of the first century I admire, I, 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 I love the words of, uh, in the scriptures attributed to Jesus. I love the wisdom, the encoded wisdom of the Bible and of the, uh, of the first century Christianity. But I'm talking about the church entity, mentally deranged, moronic stuff that is now being promoted in America, calling itself the church. What a disgraceful display of stupidity and ignorance and childish stupidity. So, and, they, and I know that there's a lot of people who see that, and the church is trying to do whatever they can to destroy my name and my work. But 
I don't care at this point. 73 years old, it just doesn't matter to me anymore. I just do what I do and see where it goes. But that's one of the major reasons why I've just kind of lost hope. I just drop out of the picture because I know that trying to save America, mentally and spiritually and intellectually save America, <clears throat> is like trying to empty the Pacific with a teacup. It's not going to happen. The people love in America. The people have spoken. After all, we are a democracy, and the majority rules. Well, the people of America have spoken. They love stupidity. They cannot get enough of criminality, pornography, alcohol, drugs, wars, violence, basketball, silly-ass ball games, you know, uh, computer games, anything that is infantile, ignorant, uh, lacking any intelligence or anything humanly of, of value, the American people love it. We can't get enough of bullshit, silly-ass ball games, silly-ass, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, soap operas during the day, game shows, all kinds of pornography, stupidity, ignorance. The American people love it. And so we get the kind of government that we deserve. We love getting screwed over. We love lies. We love stupidity and ignorance. We, we abhor reading a book or thinking. And so, you know, like one, one, one of the founding fathers of this country said, uh, if you're expecting to be free and stupid, that ain't going to happen. You can be stupid or you can be free, but you're not going to be both. And so that's why the people of America live like slaves. We live like slaves. We act like slaves because we are slaves. And uh, the country's finished. Our morals are gone. Our ethics are gone. Our scruples are gone. Our, our money is gone. Our, our work, our base of operation is gone. There's nothing left to this country but stupidity, ignorance, dancing, silly-ass ball games. It's uh, frightening to, to see what has happened to our great country. And who's on the front lines of this bullshit if it isn't the Christians? They're out there dancing in the street, and they just love, they just love what's going on. <clears throat> and so uh, and the, the Jews are prancing around telling everybody they're God's chosen people. I'm, I'm just amazed at the stupidity of the human race. You can trace you can trace Judaism back to Hinduism. Judaism is based on an ancient religion in the Hindu world called Brahmanism. The Brahmin religion is the basis for what we call today Judaism. So if you want to understand Judaism, go look up Brahma and Brahmanism in India, and there is the basis for Judaism. <clears throat> If you want to understand Christianity, go back and study Egypt and, this, and the worship of the sun, the sun god, Ra. So, you know, if you want to understand uh, uh, Islam, very simple. Anybody who has any questions about that lunatic religion, that mentally disordered bunch of nonsense, uh, all you've got to do is get a two-volume book set. There's two volumes, volume one and volume two, called Moon, M-O-O-N, Moon hyphen O, <clears throat> the letter O, hyphen Theism, T-H-E-I-S-M. The book is called Moon O Theism, M-O-O-N hyphen O, hyphen Theism, Moon O Theism. And it's a two-volume set. Each volume is like six to six hundred and fifty to seven hundred pages. Huge volumes, two of them, Moonotheism, in which the author does an absolutely incredible job on thirteen, fourteen hundred pages, where he picks apart 
and minute detail, and one-third of the book is footnotes. On every single page is footnotes, where everything comes from, where all of this nonsensical crap developed, who started it, and uh, it's called Moon O Theism. Go on the web and order it. You can probably even find it as an ebook somewhere on the web for free. But if you're interested in in Islam and where this incredibly diseased religion comes from, this mentally disordered disease on the earth that we call Islam. If you want to know about where this thing developed and how this cancer started on the human body, on the human body, is this murderous disease called Islam. Go get the book. I didn't write the book. 1,400 pages of footnotes called Moon Old Theism. And then when you look at the, as I said, Judaism and that incredible, Incredible nonsense about God's chosen people. When you find out who the Jews really are, and you find out where Judaism really came from, and you begin for the first time to look at what's really going on in Judaism and the difference between the Zionist Jews and the regular Jews, and find out that four fifths of all Jews on the earth are not Semitic. Only one-fifth of the Jews on the earth are Semitic. And once you understand that only one-fifth of the Jews are Semitic, the other four-fifths are Gentiles. Now, it's, uh, it's astounding to me how many people don't know that. <clears throat> and the four-fifths of the Jews, which are not Semitic are referred to as Ashkenazi. Now there's a loaded term if there ever was one. Ashkenazi? You better go back and look at the word Ash and then Kenazi. Ash, K A or K E, Nazi. N A Z I. Ashka Nazi. N A Z I. Get it? Ashka Nazi. It goes back to the old German. Um, <clears throat> Jewish, German, um, what would we call it, uh, uh, an operation going on in Europe <clears throat> that calls itself Jewish. It was actually an Ashkot Nazi movement of Jews who call themselves Jews, but who are not Semitic. They're not Jews. They're Europeans hiding under the cloak of an ignorant, crazy religion. <clears throat> Um, I'm just so amazed that one day, I'm sure, there's going to come a day when the whole world is going to awaken to find out that Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are all mentally deranged diseases of the mind, and by their fruits you shall know them. Well, what is the fruitage of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity? Look at the earth today. Look at the world you live in. What is the fruitage that has been brought to the earth by these three religions if it isn't war, bloodshed, violence, pornography, stupidity, ignorance? What a mess the world is in. And why do you have three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam? Why three? I mean, there's a whole story there. The rabbis know... The, you know, the big shots in the religions know, but they're not telling the people. Why are there three divisions? Why is there one big one or 16 big religions? No, no, there's three divisions. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Triune. That's because all religions are based on the number three. That's a Masonic number. All religions are based on three. Why? Because there are only three points to a triangle. A triangle based on the pyramid. It's a, it's a very, very ancient old story about how the world really works. So, in answer to you, it took a long time to get to it, but in answer to your question as to why have I dropped out 
and not doing very much anymore is quite simply because I'm physically, spiritually, and mentally tired. I'm tired over the many, many years of reading and studying theology, religion, comparative religions, occultism, mysticism. I started talking about Il Dumanati back in 1967. 67. Uh, I don't even know how many years that is, over 40 years ago. I was talking around all over Los Angeles. I was going to uh, motion picture studios at night and television studios and music studios and talking with movie stars and all kinds of people in the entertainment industry some 45 years ago, talking to them about the Knights Templars and the Illuminati and uh, Masonic orders out of Germany and France and French Illuminism and Pan-Germanism. And in 1967, I was talking to people in the motion picture industry about the Illuminati, secret societies, uh, the, the Knights Templars, the Federal Reserve, International Monetary Fund, World Banks, World Religions, Occultism, Devil Worship in the, in the churches, and all the disgusting crap that's in the three major religions of the world, where they really came from and what they're really doing and who they really are. And so now, of course, now it's everywhere. Now all the movies, Da Vinci Code and National Treasure and all these movies talking about the Illuminati and secret societies and the Knights Templars and all that stuff is on, uh, you know, on uh, History Channel and Discovery Channel. And it's, it's everywhere in Hollywood. Well, it should be. It ought to be everywhere in Hollywood, for Christ's sake. I've been talking about it for some 45 years. And before me, there were other people talking about it in Hollywood. So at this point, I mean, I did the best I could and, and, and caused people to wake up and start talking about it. And now today, Christians are talking about Illuminati, never realizing it was not a Christian who brought up this subject. You know, when I was talking back in 1967 in lectures about Illuminati and secret societies and corruption in government and all of that, Christians had no idea in the world what I was talking about. But now that that's finally out there, so everybody now knows about it. Oh, sure, everybody knows about it now. And so now you've got the Christians who are world-famous authorities on the subject. So I just, I just watch all this nonsensical circus going on around me. And basically, I've just given up. I'm broke, I'm tired, I'm old, I've done the best I could, and all I've ever gotten was uh, was lies and deception and, and uh, manipulation and exploitation. And so that's, you know, I'm just, just letting you know what I'm feeling. I'm just tired of all of it. I'm tired of all the lies. I'm tired of people attacking my work uh, and, and I have an attack on my name and my family. So... That's what I've been putting up with for the last 50 years, and so that's why I'm just tired. I think I've got a right to be at 73 years old. I've got a right to be tired. It's old, and I've been doing it for 53 years. So that answers your question, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I give you a pretty good round, a, round, a round picture of how this stuff works in my life. It's given me nothing but heartache and tragedy, and loss of everything. Lost my family, my wife, my marriage, my home. Every nickel I have was stolen from me. Uh, all my products were stolen from me. My name has been stolen from me. Everything I've got, you know, except for the clothes I'm wearing, been ripped off and stolen from me. So, uh, so that's why you don't hear a whole lot more from Jordan Maxwell. I did the best I could. Well, on that last statement, Jordan, I think some elaboration is in order if you're in the mood for it. Yeah, I guess so. One of the weapons in the arsenals of your detractors is this Federal Trade Commission case. This is yeah. a Federal Trade Commission. Uh, yeah, we just put it out there for the whole world. I mean, it's out there publicly anywhere. Anyway, Federal Trade Commission plaintiff versus Jordan Maxwell. Uh, individually in doing business as BBCOA 
a.k.a. BBC of America. And uh, the interesting thing about that, I was an eyewitness to those events. I know yeah. what happened. And yeah, I, you were I, in the office. Yeah, and uh, and what people don't understand about this, once again, you know, your your detractors are quick to jump on this as uh, if as if this is proof of uh, of uh, how fraudulent everything you say is, because uh, here it is, right here, the Federal Trade Commission versus Jordan Maxwell. He's a fraud. He's a liar. Not understanding the totality of the circumstances that led to this. That goes back to the days when you were religious editor at Truth Seeker. Yep. And one of the allegations against you coming from uh, certain parties associated with Truth Seeker is you never give credit to Manly Palmer Hall. You've stolen everything you have say from Manly Palmer Hall. It always comes from some criminally insane moron who uh, is working under the facade they're there to help you. When really uh, they, they, they see dollar signs in their eyes. And, and it, this is one of the allegations. You never... You never credit Manly Palmer Hall. You've stolen all his work. And, 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 and Manly Palmer, you, uh, he didn't leave you his research library. I've seen the journals that were left to you. Old material. That was given to you. <laughs> and people misrepresent all these things. So this thing going back to the Truth Seeker Company when you were a religious editor. I mean, I don't know, George. I don't think most people would even have any awareness of who Manly Palmer Hall was if it was not for you basically saying time and time again, this man was my greatest teacher. That's true. But this, yeah. but this, this all leads up to this uh, Federal Trade Commission case. And basically, from my understanding, what happened to Truth Seeker, uh, you, you're there, you have a nice place to live, you're a religious editor, and then uh, because of some knowledge you have, you're um, unceremoniously uh, tossed out into the street. <laughs> yeah, and that was because of David Icke, because I brought David Icke to America in 1992, David Icke did not do anything against me, but his girlfriend, uh, 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 Ferguson, uh, can't remember, Alice Ferguson, Alice Ferguson <clears throat> was a, a girlfriend of David Icke's back in 1992, and Alice Ferguson came to me from England. She came over from England and called me and came to my office, and she brought with her a friend of hers. David Griffin. David Griffin and Alice Ferguson came from England to San, De to San Diego to meet me, and they came to my office. And Alice told me that she was here. She had been told uh, to go to America and see Jordan Maxwell at the Truth Seeker Company because he was helping everybody, uh, anybody who had something of value to do for the human family, that he was helping and, and financing, which I was. I was helping to finance uh, all, all kinds of operations and people and authors and writers and Zachariah Sitchin and, and, uh, and all kinds of other people that I was helping get their books published, and that was what I was doing. And so she said, well, I wanted to come over to America to see if we could get you to help my, my friend David Icke. And I said, well, uh, first of all, who are you? She said, I'm Alice Ferguson, <clears throat> and this is my friend David Griffith, and we're here to see if you will help us bring David Icke to America and and promote him. So I, I sat and talked with him for a little while, and I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hire you, Alice and David. I'll hire both of you. And I'll give you, I'll pay you both $2,500 a month. That's 5000 bucks in salary a month, 2500 a piece. I'll hire you and David, and you work for the company, the Truth Seeker Company, and, uh, and, and you work to promote me and my work in the Truth Seeker Company. But at the same time, you can work and promote your friend David Icke, whoever he is and whatever he, whatever he's doing. It sounds like he's a, a good guy, so yeah, I, I don't mind. Uh, you can you know promote him and use the company money to promote him and do whatever you want. <clears throat> 
So then they just, then Alice tells me, well, that's wonderful. So now I gave her a job, him, him, and, or, him and her, David Griffith and uh, Alice Ferguson, who were representing uh, David Icke. And then I, she said, so, okay, so now I, I've given them both a job. Well, they got to have a place to live. They don't have a place to live. So I said, all right, I'll get both of you an apartment, a, a, a one-bedroom apartment. I'll have the company uh, you know, do that for you. So the foundation bought them both, uh, 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 rented them both apartments. Well, we got to have a car because we don't have a car. So I said, all right, I'll get the foundation to buy a car for you, a new car. And, uh, and well, we've we got an apartment. We don't have anything in it. I said, okay, I will give each one of you, both of you, $2,500 a piece to furnish your apartments. So, you know, that's uh, ten grand there already. And so now they've got a new apartment a piece. They've got a new car to come to work in. They've got a new job paying $2,500 a piece to each one. And uh, and so now they should be happy, and she's got uh, uh, new furniture, and so does he. And so now all I'm asking is that you just work to promote the Truth Seeker Company and promote my projects that I'm interested in. And at the same time, you can also do whatever you want to do to promote David Icke. And so Alice Ferguson and, and, and David Griffin were working, and I had to get them, of course, I have to get them a new office. I don't have any room in my office, so I got to get both of them an office. Well, you got to have computers and phones turned on, and uh, and and fax machines and all kinds of equipment. So that's another ten thousand I had to spend to uh, get them set up and rent them new offices in the building that I was in. And uh, so once they're all set up, now they're very happy. They've got money coming in, got a nice job. Uh, they got the credit card. They got uh, the gold credit card on the foundation. So now, all of a sudden, uh, uh, she has to go back. Alice Ferguson has to go back to see her mother in England, and she's got to go see her girlfriend or a sister in Australia or wherever it was. And so she's using the the company credit card, the gold card on the foundation credit card to fly back to England, and then she brings her girlfriend back from England to stay with her, which I don't care, but I'm paying for the tickets, I'm paying for the flights, and so when they get back here, well, the girlfriend needs a job, so I said, all right, I'll, I'll pay her, you know, like a grand, and she can live with you, and so I, I paid, uh, I, I, I hired the girlfriend for Alex so that her girlfriend would have a job, and uh <clears throat> And then one day, uh, you know, uh, what's her name, uh, Bonnie Lang, who was the president of the company. I was merely running the company for two and a half, three years. So Bonnie Lang uh, uh, herself was a criminal. I didn't realize that this woman was a criminal. She's got a criminal record. I didn't realize that at the time that I was at the at the uh, Truth Seeker Company. So Bonnie Lang gets uh, get, gets to meet uh, Alice Ferguson and Alice's girlfriend. Well, Bonnie Lang brings in a friend of hers <clears throat> uh, to uh, to work for the company, and so all the women used to get together and go out to lunch at time uh, every day, and at night they would go out together, all the women in the office, and it was just me and Tim Leadham and. The, of the men in the office was me and Tim Leadham. And so one day I uh, I came in to work, and supposedly each month uh, uh, my paycheck would be in in my in the in the uh, secretary's office, and it was I had a I had a bin there I had a mail drop there in the in the main office. <clears throat> And so once a month, I would come in, and uh, and my my check would be in, the, in in my box. And so one month I came in. I was busy up in San Francisco, the financing uh, some uh, some science uh, thing for uh, friends of mine up in up in uh, Portland, Oregon, and Washington State. So I came in, and my paycheck wasn't there, and I didn't think anything about it because I was too busy. 
So I just let it slide. I just thought, well, the you know, Bonnie or whoever it is who signed the checks forgot it, so I'm not going to argue about it. <clears throat> so I went back up to San Francisco. I was working for the company and putting on shows and, and developing uh, television shows, etc., and working with Zachariah Sitchin and, and all kinds of, and Richard Hoagland and God knows all kinds of astronauts and scientists. So I was busy. And as it turns out, I got so busy. And when I came back, the, or the, the next month came around and my check wasn't there again. And I didn't say anything that my check wasn't there a second time but I, uh, because I was too busy. But it only took me about a week. And so then I went into the secretary's office and I said, where are my two checks? Where are my checks? And she said, oh, no, we fired you a couple of months ago. You've been fired. And I said, what do you mean, been fired? She said, no, Bonnie, the Bonnie Lang uh, you know, fired you. I said, well, what are you talking about, fired me? Who, who, who got authorized my, my, my uh, dismissal? And she said, well, Alice Ferguson <clears throat> uh, suggested to Bonnie that she fire you and bring David Icke in to take your place. Because uh, because uh, Alice Ferguson, she felt that David Ike would be better for this company than you, so you were fired, and uh, and Bonnie Lang agreed. So they fired you, and they're going to bring David Ike in to take your place, and so that's why you were fired two months ago. They didn't even bother to tell you. So then, when they when they confronted uh, David Ike. To come over to America now, we we, all, uh, we 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 got big fancy jobs from Jordan Maxwell. He gave us a big fancy checks and bought of our furniture and and bought us a new car and paid all of our rent and gave us all the job. And now we're doing real well. Now we're sailing along. Uh, why don't we just fire Jordan Maxwell? Just get rid of him and bring David Ike in to take his place. That's the thank you I got from Alice Ferguson. That's the thank you I got was being fired so that Alice Ferguson could bring David Icke in to take my place after I fed them, gave them an apartment, gave them money, gave them a job, bought them a car, took care of them, did all, and, and, and hired her girlfriends. And she's traveling all over the world on the gold car to Australia, New Zealand, Canada, with her girlfriend on my money, on my on my company's money, and then all I got was all I got from it was I was fired, and David Ike is going to come in and take my place. Well, then when they talked to David Ike and said, "Well, we got you a nice cushy job. We just fired Jordan Maxwell. You know, he was supposedly our friend, but we got rid of him, so now you can have his place." Well, David told them, "I'm not interested in doing a job in in an office." You know, I'm a, I, I enjoy talking to audiences and traveling around the world and doing what I do and make a lot of money and be on the stage. I'm not interested in sitting in an office like Jordan running a company, so I'm sorry. You know, you, you, you picked the wrong guy. I'm not interested in running any company. So then they were, were, they were caught between the rock and the hard place. They've already fired me. It's over. Now the David Icke doesn't want my job. So now they've got some real problems. And so, as it turns out, the whole company went defunct about a year later. The whole company went under. They had so many lawsuits. We had the police out there with with uh, all kinds of investigations, corruption by the president, Bonnie Lang. She had federal agents out there at the, in the office. The whole company just went under and found out the whole thing was a very big corrupt operation going on that uh, that they had stolen the the foundation's money the lawyers had stolen the money my god it was a it was a real mess so I left the truth seeker in a pickup truck a friend came down and picked me up and gave me a place to live because I had spent all my money and, and and brought David Ike here and spent thousands and countless thousands of dollars that uh, you know she spent on promoting David Ike to make him famous and then fired me and I left penniless and came back to Los Angeles. I had to sleep on the floor in my friend's uh, apartment. So 
you know, that's the story of my experience. And it wasn't David Icke who did anything. David didn't do anything. It was Alice Ferguson. And uh, David Griffin was a very nice guy. Unfortunately, he didn't know anything about Alice Ferguson. But he came to me and quit just before all of this stuff happened. David Griffith came to me and said, Jordan, I'm leaving. I'm going back to England. And I said, why? I kind of figured I knew what was going on then. And he said, I cannot stomach uh, Alice Ferguson anymore. I can't deal with her. I don't want to be around her. I know what she's doing behind your back. I know what the women are doing behind your back. I'm hearing them. And you've been too generous with us and too kind to me and, and given us so much. And now they're doing this to you to bring David Icke in to take your place. So I don't want important. I don't want any part of this. I'm going back to England. Goodbye and good luck. And that's it. So that's what I, you know, that was my experience with bringing David Icke to America back in 1992. It was Bonnie Lang, the president of the Truth Seeker Company that I was working for, was a criminal. She had criminal convictions. My God, you go to the San Diego County Court of Records building and look up Bonnie Lang and Truth Seeker Company, you'll see all kinds of criminal activity where her husband went to prison and she and she was involved in a million dollar ripoff of the Columbus Company, the Columbus people. Uh, they 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 got ripped off of a million bucks and and indicted her for robbery and, and embezzlement. My God, this woman was a criminal. And uh, and and while I'm there with with Bonnie Lang, at the same time now I'm confronted by uh, other sharks like uh, Alice Ferguson, and uh, and, uh, and I, I'm just amazed at at the. Uh, Profidity and the and the corruption and the criminality of these people. And again, David Icke didn't have anything to do with it. He was in Europe. He didn't know anything that was going on there. He didn't even know that I had uh, I had authorized um, over a hundred thousand dollars in four years uh, to promote him. That's how much Alice Ferguson had been spending on promoting David Icke. On the uh, on the uh, you know on the company credit cards, so yeah, so we got his books published for him, and I got him on radio and got him on coast to coast and and, and promoted him myself because I like David and I like what he was doing, and Alice Ferguson was sending him all over the world on the company credit card and buying him first class tickets to here and there. And everywhere, and ultimately, all I got out of it was fired and thrown out on the street with nothing. So that's Alice Ferguson and the David Icke story of Jordan Maxwell with the Truth Seeker. But nobody knows that. Nobody, nobody knows that. All they know is that Jordan Maxwell's a criminal and he's this and he's that. But I got all kinds of stories. I've, I've been ripped off and lied to and cheated by so many people. But happily, there have been a few people who have been close to me who was there. You were one of them. You were one when uh, when I came back to Los Angeles. So that was the David Icke story. Well, that and story, Noah. Jordan, the time frame on that, when uh, you were uh, terminated from uh, Truth Seeker, that would have been around September 5th, 1998. Yeah, that's when that happened. And see, and with, what's what's put out there, the public allegation against you, if I may play devil's advocate for a second, is uh, you were unproductive at the Truth Seeker. That's why they had to fire Jordan Maxwell because Jordan Maxwell always falls into this pattern. We want to do everything we can to help Jordan. We're so wonderful, and then Jordan just won't play ball, and he just sits on his ass and does nothing. See, and, and, and see, you're giving the other side of the story. It's a little more complicated picture. And uh, once you're basically, because this is, you were basically on the street. You were destitute. That's it. I was. I, 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 the way I would describe it, if we had to do this under penalty of perjury, would be uh, under extreme economic harm, stress, and duress. And that's, yeah. that, this, is, this is around the time of September 5th, 1998. I begin, I believe this FTC thing, that, that whole 
that problem began, well, let's see here what it says here. That's, we're talking January 16th, 2003. So there's a five-year interval there where you're basically destitute. Under yeah, economical- I was living in a, in a friend's garage, sleeping on an airbag in a garage. Exactly. And, uh, and it was in North Hollywood, and his name was Vladimir. My friend from, from uh, Europe uh, was, a, was an uh, apartment uh, manager, and he, he he had a little single apartment. And I, I brought some of my clothes and boxes up and put it in the garage, and we put an air mattress on the floor in the garage, and I was sleeping on the floor in the garage with nothing because of, because of, uh, of uh, what Alice Ferguson and the Truth Seeker and Bonnie Lang did, firing me and didn't tell me. It let me spend all of my um, all the money I had left in my account to on on the business promoting and letting them use my money and then come to find out I was fired two months ago and I didn't know it nobody told me and uh, well this is so. when the uh, the big when your name really started getting big because it was around this time the basic slide presentation was kind of making people aware of this company called Truth Seeker. That yeah. now no one knows about, and prior to you, no one knew about. That's true. Yep. So those were the days. So that so that that being the case, this FTC uh, judgment against you, which is out there, it's public knowledge. It's right on the FTC's website. Uh, you're basically destitute, and it's it's basically well, you know, whoever's going to come along and help me, uh, I, I beggars can't be choosers. That's pretty much the situation yeah. that I saw. Well, it's true. I mean, when you when you're sleeping on in a garage on the floor on an air mattress, and the only thing that was keeping me alive was my friend who was who was you know I, I'd have lunch with and dinner with, and he was buying uh, you know and, and and paying, and thankfully at least he had room in his garage for an air mattress. And uh, and so that's where I was. I was sleeping on the floor in a garage with nothing, zero. And at this time, you would have been around 56, 57 years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that's when the association began with this BBC of America. Yeah. Which right. led to the uh, Federal Trade Commission fiasco. And that, to me, uh, let it be stated publicly, I mean, that's a... That's a total case of guilt by association. And as you said, uh, you know, the federal agents took you downtown and basically said, we're putting the pressure on you because we want to know what you know. We know you had nothing to do with this, but you're useful to us. I mean, I, that's basically me paraphrasing from my understanding from what you Yeah, that's me. what they basically said without saying it. They said, we know that you didn't have anything to do with this because we know who you are. We know what your finances. We know that uh, when we froze your bank account, when we shut the BBCOA down, we know you have fifty-two dollars in your account, in your bank account, and you've never had more than a hundred dollars in your bank account at any one time. So we know that you've never had more than a hundred dollars there. You got fifty-two dollars when we when we closed your account down. We know that you didn't have anything to do with anything at all. We know that. Right, and what it was was just basically the name Jordan Maxwell lent some luster and brought some traffic to BBC of A. Well, of course, absolutely, because I was doing radio <clears throat> and, and lectures, and I was traveling around Southern California doing lectures and radio and slide presentations, and I was on coast-to-coast radio, and I was on all the big radio shows, and and uh, and of course I was promoting uh, the company BBCOA because they were they were helping me and they were giving me a website and so which you I was, had no uh, you control know, over you had no none. access to the passwords uh, no idea what type of traffic was going on there no idea how much money's coming in it's just go out there talk get on the damn radio and sell some product that's it that's all you need to know. I didn't know anything about, uh, at my age, I didn't know anything about computers at all. They had to show me how to turn one on. I knew all about a radio, how to turn one on and turn the station, but that's it. But but at my age, I didn't know anything about the technology, computers, webs. I didn't know anything about none of that. And so, and so it was decided, BBC 08 said, well, we need to get Jordan Maxwell a website. I don't even know what they're talking about. 
And so they did. And so I, they told me, well, this is going to be your website. And then I began to see what the web was all about for the first time. And I see I have a website. But what nobody told me is that it's not my website. It was being presented to me as if it were my website. Jordan Maxwell has his own website. It's called BBCOA. But I didn't realize, I don't know anything about the technology, but I had some people come in and say, Jordan, you know, you don't own that website. That's not yours. Right. Well, let me explain how that works, Jordan. I mean, you know, you basically have the domain name, and there will be a registrant associated with that. So what they're basically saying is, no, no, no you've got a, you're mistaken here, Jordan. You're not going to be the registrant. We're going to have the control and ownership of this. When we say it's your website, it means your names on there because you're going to make right. us some money. But you're That's not going to have access to any passwords. You're not going to have any say in the direction of where this company is going. Uh, and at that time, I can tell you, the last time you've lived in a proper home with an apartment was the apartment that you had in San Diego when you were associated with Truthseeker. After right. that, you have, you've been homeless. That's right. And even with your association, this, 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 uh, this, this judgment with the FTC, I mean, it's 400 and some thousand dollars. At that time, I'm an eyewitness. You're living on the floor in an office. So for, yeah, so in, in, North, in, in Tarzana, I'm sleeping on a floor so it's, on an air mattress. So it's understandable why, after a certain point in time, you do not feel like playing ball. And that's where the, uh, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, an outsider looking in from the outside, but who was there as an eyewitness, uh, you know, that's where these allegations come in. Oh, Jordan's lazy. He doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to get off his, his, his ass and, and make us yeah. some money. He's got to make us some money. Well, it's, I'm li- you, you're making money. I don't have an apartment. I can't take a shower anywhere. I sleep on a floor. But I'm expected to be productive. I have a website. No, your name's on it. It's not yours. It's not your website. Never has been. See, and this has been the up and down cycle, you know, since this this whole thing with Truth Seeker, since you when you last had an apartment in San Diego. This is what I've yeah. seen uh, looking looking inside from the outside. And this is what the you world doesn't, under, un, doesn't understand. You had this FTC, this whole thing about, uh, what, selling fake international driver's licenses and things like that. that. That was not your function, from my understanding, at BBC of A. Your job was to be Jordan Maxwell, get on the damn radio, move some product, and make us some money. That's it. That's all it was. And and what happened with that with that uh, with that Federal Trade Commission thing is that <clears throat> there were two young guys. Two young guys heard me on a radio. Uh, one of them, his name was uh, uh, Jason Whitney. Jason Whitney heard me on a radio. He was living in Orange County, and I was doing radio shows on KPFK late at night radio show. And Jason Whitney was living in Orange County, and he heard me. And so he called me the next day and said he wanted to come up and visit me because he was interested in my work and what I was doing. So he came up to visit me, and uh, he was a nice young guy, and I liked him, and he was very bright. And so uh, he started coming up to visit me every day after work. And uh, he drove all the way up from Orange County to L.A. County, I don't know, almost 50 miles each day, 50 miles home, 100 miles a day, round trip, just to come sit and hang out with me and talk with me. I didn't mind. I was, I was, that was fine with me. I don't care if he wants to come up. And then one day I said to him, why don't you just come up here and live, and I'll get you a job working with the company. I'll talk to Vic, who owns the company. He's the owner. I don't own nothing. I, I sleep on the floor, but... I'll get you. A, I'll see if I can get you a job. And so I talked with Vic, and he said, "Yeah, I'll hire him if he's good on computers and all that." So okay, so we hired him. Well, as, so now we got Jason Whitney working with the company, who was handling all of our computer stuff and record keeping and all that. And uh, he had a friend named Gus. Uh, Gus was from South America, and he was good on computers and, and artwork on computers. And so he wanted, uh, uh, Jason wanted Gus to work with us. So I went to Vic and, and asked Vic if he would hire Gus while we needed somebody to 
uh, do artwork for us and keep our help, uh, keep the books and just help run the office. And since the two boys worked together and they 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 all, and they were good friends, uh, we thought it would be good business have the two boys work for us. So Jason Whitney and and Gus came to work for the company and was doing just fine. Well. Vic was uh, was in the office. He was involved in many other pieces of business. He was involved in a lot of other business that had nothing to do with with what I was doing. You know, with radio shows and and books and tapes and videos on my subject. He was involved in other things. But because I was doing a radio show, he was he. Uh, Vic was financing the radio show. He was like a sponsor for me to do a radio show to sell my work and to sell myself and what I was doing. Uh, but at the same time, he was sponsoring the show, so he had commercials on on my radio show selling his book and his projects and and the things he was doing with law and other other commercial uh, ventures that had nothing to do with me but I don't care it's just like he's my friend who's helping me and and I'm doing the radio show my name is out there and I'm doing radio and it's so it's it's good for him and it's good for me I got a radio show and he's got somebody to promote him and his work and so Jason decided that uh, he found out, uh, I, I found out later on, that Jason had contacted a guy in, I think it was Florida, somewhere around Tampa, Florida, who was doing, uh, who was selling international driver's permits. So uh, Jason talked to this, this company in Florida who was selling international driver's permits, and and suggested that we might, uh, you know, the BBC company might promote them on our website, and we get a kickback, uh, ten, twelve percent, uh, you know, of, of the business we send to them. We get a little kickback on it. Well, that's normal in business. Okay, so uh, Jason went into Vic. I was I wasn't even in the office. I was sleeping uh, in a little one room office about two blocks away, sleeping on the floor with nothing. Right across the street in Tarzana. And may I That's may, right. may I interrupt, Jordan? What I think what what needs to be said here was BBC of A was already in exist- existence and operating outside your influence or direction or anything. Uh, BBC was basically extending themselves to you as a benefactor because your circumstances were dire. You were just, yeah, so, that's so, right. So basically, it's like, I really, uh, it's, a, it's a situation of beggars can't be choosers. This is a company. It's under someone else's influence, direction, and control. But if they're going to promote my work, then so be it. I mean, it's either sleeping under a bridge or th- this is a means to get my work out there. But you had nothing yeah. to do with the direction or the influence or control this place is going. It's this, this guy's a uh, uh, Jordan Maxwell has an audience, and uh, you know, that can be useful to us. That can make some money for us when we sell his products. Yeah. Yeah, and also, and, so, and also, and, and, also bring publicity to BBC of A, because right, right. now, now no one knows who BBC of A is. But everybody knows Jordan Maxwell. So Correct. The idea was, well, look at Jordan Maxwell has celebrity. People know him. He's on the radio. It's good for business. Television. So why don't we? You know, we'll, we'll we'll promote Jordan Maxwell's radio show. We'll pay for it to for him to do a radio show, and in the process, people are listening to him. Uh, we can sell our products also. The BBC OA can sell their products and their books, and what they're doing. And me, I don't care. He's, uh, it's my friend who's supposedly helping me, so I don't care if he wants to advertise on my program, and, and I'll promote him on the show and his products and what he's doing. It has nothing to do with me, but he's, he's sponsoring the show. And so uh, <clears throat> so Jason goes into the office uh, and talks to Vic and says uh, there's a company down in Florida selling uh, international driver's permits, and I think, uh, you know, they'll give us uh, like 10 or 15 bucks or 20 bucks, whatever it was, kickback for every uh, customer we send to them if we put their, you know, uh, the ad on our uh, BBC OA website. And so Vic said, yeah, okay, whatever, and he lets them do it. And then later on, about a month or two later, uh, Jason Hears about a company in the in the in back east on the east coast 
that is uh, cleaning up credits, uh, credit cleanup company. And so uh, he contacts that company back there and says, you know, can we, maybe we can do some business. We'll send people to you and get a little kickback on it. And yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> So Jason Whitney goes in to see Vic, the, uh, the, uh, the owner of the company, <clears throat> and says, uh, we've got a, another company now on the East Coast that is doing credit cleanup, and we can make a few bucks off of them, too, if we're promoting them. And so we get a little kickback off of them. So Vic says, okay, do it. <clears throat> so now comes the feds. Because the company in Florida was selling the uh, the uh, international driver's permits so that the people could say that they weren't from America, that they were only visiting here, and therefore they didn't have to pay taxes. So that was like a tax uh, scam <clears throat> to tell the tax man that you were not from here, that you're driving with the international driver's permit because you're not from here, and that way you cover so you don't have to pay taxes. Well, when the feds found out about that, they shut that company down immediately uh, for fraud. And because BBCOA is making a, a few bucks off of, you know, we're promoting them, BBCOA is promoting them and sending them business, well, then they found out that the other company, which was a credit card, I mean, which was cleaning up people's credit, was paying, was charging, I heard, three times the amount that's normally charged for credit cleanup, and the feds felt, figured that was uh, that was a criminal charging three times a regular rate. It wasn't that what they were doing was wrong. It's that they were charging too much for their service, and we were making, BBCOA was making a piece of the action off of those overcharges, so the feds decided that enough is enough, and so they came in one day and uh, and and shut down BBCOA, and uh, and because of uh, credit card cleanup sh- scam, and uh, and another scam in Florida selling international driver's permits, so they shut the company down. Well, when they shut the company down, uh, I I am now also liable. Because I'm on the radio promoting BBCOA. I'm on the radio promoting the company and, and what they're doing and, and their you know and their projects. Therefore the company is financing my show, uh, sponsoring my show. I'm on and the and the website that was being used <clears throat> was in my name. It was my website. I don't know anything about websites. I don't know anything about You don't have any password access and also... I got nothing. Right. I don't know from nothing. I have have Jason and Gus handling a website for me because I don't even know what a website is. And and what it needs to be understood at this point in time, you don't even have an apartment. You're living in an office on a floor and your association, you say we were doing this, we were doing that, but really it's the BBC of A, and uh, you're only associated with the BBC because your your associate, association is as a researcher, and uh, beggars can't be choosers. If they're going to promote my life's work, so be it. I have nothing else to do with what they're doing. Of course not. I didn't know anything was going on. All I knew is that Jason and Gus... <clears throat> well, running the office, and Vic was the boss. I'm not there. I don't have an office there. I don't know what they're doing. I haven't right. got any you, idea. You were not a, ever, from my understanding from what I saw, is that you were never allowed to assert any influence, control, or direction over BBC of A's business activities or their policies. All you I was wanted never to do, even told. Exactly, exactly. That's it. You, so just, I, you just wanted to have an association with them with this, okay, this is just a... Uh, this this is well, an expedient thing to do. If this is the ones that are going to be the one the promoter, I can, I'm allowed to be a researcher and promote my life's work, then so be it. Because I uh, I'm uh, that bridge back there behind this abandoned uh, this uh, office I'm sleeping in. I don't even have an apartment at this time. I have no choice. That's exactly right. They were at least get, uh, letting me be on the radio and uh, and and uh, promoting my work and giving me a website. I thought I had a website. I thought I had BBCOA was my website. No, 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 no. It doesn't belong to me at all. It belongs to Vic. It belongs to the BBCOA company. 
But yes, my name is on it because my name is known. BBC LA isn't known, but Jordan Maxwell is known. So therefore, they will put my name on it, but they own it. And so my name is on it, and it's promoting uh, my name, and I bring in all the in- interest into BBC OA because my name is out there, and I'm on radio. And so they're making lots of money off of me. Me, I've got nothing. I just sleep on the floor. But at least I got a website, I think. It's I better I than website. nothing, right? But you don't know what's going on. It's not registered in your name. That domain name, jordanmaxwell.com, is not registered to you. You not don't have at all. password not access at all. to it. So, as I said, you know, you really, it, it was pretty damn clear. You're not going to ins- assert any influence, control, or direction over BBC's BB- BBC of A's business activities and policies. Thank you very much. You just go out there and be a good boy. We pat you on the head and go out there and sell some product for us. Never mind what we're doing. It's not your concern. Just sleep on the damn floor. When you wake up, go out there and promote the show. That's it, because it's going to make us some money. Yeah, and so when I'm doing radio, I'm promoting BBCOA and whatever it is that they are doing. Whatever it is they are doing, I'm promoting the company. I don't know what they're doing. I'm just promoting the company. Why? Well, because they're paying for the radio station. They're paying for the radio show, so I can do my radio show. So they are, like, sponsoring my radio show. I don't care what they're doing. Whatever they're doing ain't got nothing to do with me because I don't know anything about their business and I don't even know anything about my own website. I don't have any codes. I don't know anything about websites. So Jason Whitney and Gus were my uh, webmasters along with working for the company that I got them the job. I got them a nice cushy job. I got Jason Whitney's girlfriend. Uh, I got her a job as a secretary. I usually, I always tried to get everybody a job and get, and keep everybody happy and do what I could to help everybody while I'm sleeping on the floor. That's correct. And then when 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 the the feds came in because of the of the shysters back east, well, BBCOA is in business with those shysters back east, so you are equally as guilty. So who's on that BBC uh, 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 radio show? Jordan Maxwell. <clears throat> Well, who is, uh, who's the face on the front of the BBC website? That's Jordan Maxwell. Good, then he's going to jail because, because Jordan Maxwell is equally as guilty. The only thing is that Jordan Maxwell was sleeping out two blocks away on the floor and didn't know nothing that was going on. I didn't know what they were doing, and nobody ever told me what they were doing. I just was trying to do my work, and I was happy to right. promote Right, you them. don't worry about what the website looks like. That's not your concern. You just go out there, be Jordan Maxwell, talk that magic stuff you talk on the radio that people so love to hear, and that's going to move some product. That's all you need to worry about. You don't What's worry that? about having an apartment. Don't worry about taking a shower like a human being. You got an office. That's all you need. And here's, a, here's 50 bucks a week to maybe go get some groceries or something. That's basically it. And so then, then once the uh, Federal Trade Commission comes in, they raided the place. You weren't there. You're across no. the street. Uh, this all goes down around uh, January 2003. Now it's you're in the same situation. Once again, you were in with the truth seeker, back on your ass, back on the street, homeless with nothing, uh, also trying to promote your life. And being now a new culprit. Now I'm a new criminal. Now the Christians have got a new thing against me. See, the Federal Trade Commission caught this dastardly criminal, Jordan Maxwell, who's making millions and ripping the public off while I'm sleeping on the floor two blocks away with nothing. I have no idea in the world what's going on. I don't know what the Federal Trade Commission's there for. I don't know what they're doing. I've got the faintest idea what's going on over two blocks away at the office. I don't know what they're selling. I don't know what they're doing. I've got the faintest ideas. None of my business, not my company. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Just be happy that they are promoting your radio show and giving you 50 bucks a week to eat on. And uh, when you're broke and have no place to go, anything is better than nothing. So that was my situation. Well, today... Well, let me, today, let me elaborate Jordan, on that, Jordan. May I? Because at this time, at this time, you know, you're 57, 58, 59, maybe hitting 61, 60. Actually, uh, actually, it was 62. 
So, uh, but you're not you're not eligible to. Uh, you can't get Social Security or claim anything. So it's there's no money coming in. Period. So okay, you're going. You say you're my friend and you're going to help me. You're going to promote my work. Once again, it's a situation of guilt by association and beggars can't be choosers. And yep. that's that, and that's it. So that's unfortunately what happened. And uh, now you're the whole world can see it there. They can see the money judgment. They can all see there. They can go to the FTC's website, look up Jordan Maxwell FTC. It's all listed there. And pretty much you got stuck with a bill. Uh, it's four hundred and some thousand dollars. And I can tell you, at that time, you're sleeping on an office floor. You can't take a shower. You don't have new clothes. You're barely able to feed yourself. You know, this is what we're and, and the and and the feds took a hundred and thirty dollars out of my social security of seven hundred dollars a month. They took a hundred and thirty dollars out of my social security since two thousand three. Every month, one hundred and thirty dollars goes out of my social security uh, while I'm sleeping on the floor, uh, and my my rent was six hundred. Oh, my God, if you if you're getting seven hundred and the feds are taking six thirty out, and my rent is 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 uh, is six hundred, I was uh, that's why I was starving from day to day. I I uh, I, I had to pay my rent. Well, that and, rent uh, is not for an apartment. That rent is for. And all, uh, one, uh, one dirty little room. Yeah, and also, too, Bill Ryan from Project Camelot, he, he will attest to this. I mean, I think he, he said on his uh, in one of those forums that he was shocked at the squalor you were living in. Yeah, well. So, know, see, this, this, is, this is what, uh, what people don't understand. And they don't understand, yeah. well, why isn't Jordan Maxwell doing anything? Why isn't he doing anything? And it's it's just it's a very demoralizing predicament to be in, you know. And then you get these criminally insane morons coming in. Oh, we're going to help you. We're your friend. And it's just you know, and it's just it all yeah. comes down to it all comes down to to this type of research. Yeah, it requires a benefactor, and it's not necessarily a for-profit operation, right? But soon no, as soon, not at all. soon as the squeeze is put on and you're not playing ball and you're not making us some money, oh boy, let's go out there on a defamation campaign and slander Jordan Maxwell and say, look at this FTC judgment. This proves what a fraud he is. Never understanding the totality of the circumstances and the facts of what was really occurring. Okay, Jordan.